Do you suffer from thin mixes coming out of your home studio? If you do, don't worry, you're not alone. It's a common problem for home studio owners. But is there anything more underwhelming than finishing your masterpiece, put it on in your car stereo, and you get presented with a thin, weak, and underwhelming mix? In this video today, we're gonna to be looking at some of the reasons why that might be occurring from your home studio and offer some solutions. So thin, weak mixes coming from your home studio will be a thing of the past. Around 10 years ago or so, I found myself uh, in a pro studio in deepest, darkest Suffolk, um, spending a day with the uh, new studio owner there and checking out some of my home studio mixes in their new control room. And the mixes translated really well. I remember being really happy as a home studio enthusiast, but certainly what was a bit lacking was some of the low mids and some of the bass, and it was consistent throughout a lot of my mixes. Uh, at the time, what we did was just cranked up the low, mid and bass on the EQ, but obviously that was a little bit disappointing. And I learned a big lesson that day about working from a home studio and some of the big potential pitfalls. And one of the big ones is uh, with the low mids and the bass and your space lying to you, which is a really, really common issue. What do I mean by that? What I mean is there's a lot of low mid and bass build up going on in a home studio in a room which hasn't been professionally acoustically treated. So what you're hearing is essentially lying to you. You're hearing too much bass, too much woofy low end and you're invariably mixing with too little of it within your mix. Now there is stuff you can do of course you can rush out right now and go and grab acoustic treatment and a bit of acoustic treatment is a good move in your home studio certainly some bass traps in the corners absorption behind and to the sides even a cloud above you of course is going to really help but today I also want to offer some solutions within your mix method so you can avoid thin mixes going forward so the first thing that you could do and you may think of doing right off the bat when you finished your mix and you go and cross reference in a car or on your stereo wherever you reference or just feedback from your friends and they say look you've got a really thin mix here the first thing you might be tempted to do is just to reach for a plug-in an EQ plug-in or whatever you've got on your mix bus and just crank it in the low end or the bass now firstly I wouldn't recommend doing anything too violent anyway in terms of EQ moves like pass 2 dB on your mix bus anyway but when you've got control of your mix you're not at the mastering stage right now but you can actually dive within your mix I would strongly recommend not going for that easy quick turn of the knob on your mix bus but much sooner dive in and check out some of the tracks within your mix now that's what we're going to do right now if you want to learn more about musical mixing that's musical mixing from your home studio as a musician before technician then check out my free seven step guide to musical mixing from your home studio the link is in the description box below so we've been talking about the low end of bass seems quite obvious then we should be probably starting off on the bass guitar now you might think the next step you want to do if you've just got your mix back and you're going to do some revisions and it's sounding thin is so you're just going to crank up that bass. You're going to crank it up uh, uh, at the low end. Uh, I've got it cranked here. You can see on the Pro EQ, which is a stock EQ from uh, Studio One, at 33 hertz. And I've done a massive boost there. Um, of 13 dB so you might think that's just going to do the job now I've made this just to reflect the moves which I've done on uh, this uh, Neve channel strip just to the right of it because I want to show you guys that it's not about increasing the volume to make something bigger and fatter and warmer and to avoid those thin mixes what we actually want to create are overtones and harmonics and new frequencies down there on the low end to fatten our bass out so just check this out here's our bass as it is Now I'm just going to turn on Pro EQ. And off. And on. So you can hear a significant difference to the low end, but now we're going to turn Pro EQ off and we're going to turn uh, our Neve emulation on. And we've got some saturation going on as well as those boosts. Uh, that you can see here we've got going on here too let's just check it out off here's our EQ stock EQ back to the Neve 
And what you can hear from what we're doing here is fattening out that bass once again with overtones, harmonics, and new frequencies being created. What I'm not saying is you have to rush out and buy this channel strip to get big fat bass every time if you do want to. However, there is a 10% uh, discount in the description box below. But what I am saying is that in order to create big, rich, fat bass, to create overtones, harmonics, and new frequencies, as well as EQ boosting and working with your EQ, you're also going to want to bring in some saturation. Now, you could do this just with um, this stock EQ or whatever EQ you choose to use and a combination of that and a saturation plugin. These same guys, kit plugins, who make this channel strip actually do a free uh, saturation plugin called Barrier. There's also another excellent free one called Saturation Knob from the guys over at Softube. So the takeaway is when you're mixing bass and you want wider, bigger bass to avoid those thin mixes, Think of it not as a big stacking column of volume, but you want to create a bass that is wide. And you're going to do that by creating saturation, by creating new frequencies, overtones and harmonics to make a nice, big, fat, warm bass. Another big thing that can really contribute a lot to consistently coming out with weaker sounding mixes is what I call the Tetris mind mix affliction. <laughs> And that is believing that when you're mixing music, everything's just got to fit just so and perfectly, just like those blocks that drop down in the game of Tetris. So it's getting out of the mindset that mixing is just one perfect formulaic puzzle that you can put everything to. And you, you can click your bass in here and click your, your guitars in here and your vocal up there and everything's just going to sit just so. I mean, back in the day, mix engineers were called balance engineers. And for good reason, because... Mixing music is about balancing and there's plenty of overlap. So, I mean, we're going to look at some guitars in a moment, but uh, this is particularly relevant when we look at high pass filtering. And I see a lot of people making this mistake of dialing in too much high pass, particularly on electric guitars. So you're just dialing in that high pass filter and because you're listening for the bass or you're listening down there and you're thinking, look, I need lots of room for my kick and my bass. I want that to sit there and then my guitars are going to stack on top and then my vocals upon on the top of that. But what you're not lit listening or not noticing for is that actually you're killing all the warmth and vibe and all the good stuff out of your electric guitar. So it really is a balancing act of leaving enough space down the bottom there, but not killing the warmth because the more of those low mids that you dial out with a high pass filter, the, the weaker and the thinner your mix is going to get. So let's take a listen to these guitars and as an example. I've got my high pass filter off at the moment. And let's dial it into its extreme. Certainly a lot more space there for the bass, right? But our guitars they've lost a lot of character and sound a bit scratchy, weak and, 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 and thin. And if in turn they are, we know they're contributing to a, a less warm mix, a thinner mix. So let's just dial it back a bit. And as a compromise around here on the high pass filter, the guitars still have their character and sound warm, as in turn does our mix, but we're also filtering out some of that low end and giving some space. There is one more thing you can really do that's going to really help you not to be getting those thin mixes, particularly when you're listening back uh, with your reference tracks. That's to invest in a set of decent headphones. Decent headphones will then enable you to A, B uh, the bass much more accurately with your reference tracks than your monitors will be in your home studio because there's no way for the sound to bounce around um, they're going straight into your ears. And when it comes to the low end, uh, that's a great way to accurately reference what's going on down there. Thanks so much for checking out this video today. I really hope you got something from it. If you did, or if you've got anything else to add about making thin mixes from your home studio, drop it in the comments box below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, but most importantly, go have yourself a great day.